Here's your China Brief this morning. A look at what's making headlines in national newspapers and topping today's coverage in state media is Xi Jinping's call for greater loyalty and discipline in the military. News outlets say that Xi delivered a strong message against corruption as he spoke at a military political work conference in the city of Yan'an. Now, Xi used a similar meeting in 2014 to assert his authority over the PLA. At least a dozen senior military officials were removed from their posts in a corruption crackdown last year. Meanwhile, the Global Times has published a story blasting a U.S. delegation's meeting with the Dalai Lama in India. The article quotes analysts who argue that Washington is trying to contain China using Tibet, referred to by its Chinese name Xi Jinping. Now, it also warns that a U.S. bill boosting support for Tibet will damage relations with Beijing. Yeah, and there's more really reporting from the ongoing uh, conference uh, in Shanghai, the Lu Jiazui Forum, uh, in the financial press here. So the PBOC-backed financial news is actually expounding, that's a good verb, expounding on Governor Pan Gongsheng's speech. Uh, it cites unnamed industry players who say the central bank will make it clear that a short-term interest rate will become the main policy benchmark, something the market's been talking about all week, of course. Um, that would reduce the importance then of the one-year MLF that, of course, every now and then we uh, break here on shows and talk about a lot. Now, the China Securities Journal, just to pivot here to the overseas and the listing market here, uh, is reporting that the CSRC Vice Chair uh, Fang Xinghai is called to speed up the filing of Chinese companies' overseas listings. It says 158 firms have filed for overseas listings. That's as of Tuesday, and 85 in Hong Kong, 73 uh, in the U.S., which takes us directly into one of the scoops out of Bloomberg this morning, talking yeah. about how we some of these smaller companies that have been looking to list and raise money in the U.S. have encountered some friction. Yeah, they. they I think China kind of loosened the grip on that maybe a year or two ago, mm. just basically just given how you know it was hard to find funding in, in the domestic market, so maybe you still could list in the mm. U.S., but now you're hearing the likes of the NASDAQ, according to our sources, is, is really increasing the scrutiny around some of these small IPOs. In particular, they're asking all these applicants uh, whether you know their identity, their independence of the firm's pre-IPO investors selling mm. shares in these listings as well. So uh, obviously there's also been a lot of scrutiny around some of these ones that are already listed in the U.S. AMTD Digital, for example, Adendax. I remember we were checking those stocks before that surged like, what, 32,000 mm. uh, percent when they debuted. Uh, just a few years ago, only to crash basically uh, weeks later. So certainly, there's been a lot of questioning around New York. It's been harder this. to yeah. to, to get it listed. We understand also from uh, our reporting that no IPOs have actually been pulled. It's simply that they've had to spend a longer amount of time, weeks, additional few weeks to uh, get the process uh, greased.